Hello everyone, FPS Chazzle here. Welcome back to my nuclear stuff series. Today we will be discussing, well last time we discussed particles. We talked about protons, neutrons, electrons, photons, and neutrinos. And today we're going to be moving on to actual radiation stuff. We're going to be talking about activity, half-life, and decay. So let's get to it. So before we can go into radioactive particles, types of radiation, and the concept of dose, we're going to start by talking about how radiation is quantified. Activity, half-life, and decay chains. Activity represents how much radioactive stuff you have. Half-life represents how long it'll be there. And decay chains represent what you'll get when your material decays. So let's start off with activity. Activity is pretty self-explanatory. Got yourself a little nondescript pile of uh, stuff here. It's radioactive. You know, your little trefoil. You know, the little radioactive stuff going on here. Got our little activity sample. Send it off, you know, gammas and electrons and all kinds of fun stuff. Neutrons come streaming out of this bad boy. We got ourselves a radioactive pile. So how do you... So activity is what you... Is how you describe how much radioactive stuff you have. Like... You describe the weight of this in grams. You describe the ac how much radioactive stuff is here in terms of activity. So this is how many decays occur per unit time in a radioactive sample. So basically what a decay is is when unstable atoms emit one or more particles to reach a, sta a stable energy. That's all radiation is. It's just a way for atoms to get to a more stable energy. And nature always wants to get to a more stable position. So... It has SI units of Becquerel's, who is probably some physicist, <laughs> abbreviated to BQ. And a Becquerel is one disintegration per second. And then it, this is the SI standard. So this is what the intelligent metric world uses. <laughs> and then uh, the U.S. Imperial standard is Curie's to describe radiation. This has the unit of CI, abbreviation of CI, and this is 37 billion Becquerels. That's what a Curie is equivalent to. So when the Curie was created, it was basically ha what the activity of a sample of radium was back in the day. So uh, it's actually a, a sample of radium actually has a slightly lower activity, but the, the number stuck here. So it's empirical in nature, whereas the Becquerel is metric in nature. Becquerel is one disintegration per second. If 37 billion Becquerel sounds like a lot, it kind of is. It carries a pretty good size sample of radioactive material, but one disintegration per second is basically nothing. You'd have no idea that was happening. So, however, the activity of a given sample is not constant over time. So we're talking about decays and disintegrations here, which is, that's the same thing, by the way. So this sample here will get less radioactive as time goes on. I think that's something that most people would know as common knowledge that stuff doesn't stay radioactive forever. But we tend to think of like irradiated areas like, I don't know, Fukushima or Chernobyl, where uh, it stays radioactive for a pretty long time, but some stuff decays away pretty quickly. So how do we quantify this? We talk about it in terms of half-life. So half-life of a material is how you describe how long something will stay. So what the half-life represents is after a given amount of time, you'll go from having, say, one unit of radioactive material to half a unit. And this time right here, let me draw a better one. This time right here is the half-life, sometimes referred to as the T1 half. So this is the half-life. If you've seen the lambda symbol, that's not half-life. That's the decay constant. And that's the probability that any radioactive atom will decay at any given time. So T1 half is half-life here. So this is what you use to describe how long something is going to stay around for. So uh, let's see here. So something like uranium has a half-life on the order of a few million years. Um, and then some other stuff like Praseodymium 131 has a half-life on the order of like a few minutes or something. So it really varies wildly. Um, the shorter half-life you have, the more radioactive or dangerous you can consider something. So basically... The shorter the half-life is, that means the more disintegrations per second you have. So if something has a really long half-life, like several million years, it's not going to be disintegrating that much. You're not going to get, be getting much radiation off of it. However, if something has a half-life of a few seconds, it's 
it's going to be giving off a lot of radiation because it's all going to be decaying away very quickly. So nothing really too, you know, mathematical involved with this for the most part. I'm just trying to get some of these theories across here, just some idea of what this kind of stuff uh, signifies. So let's follow out one of these half-life things. So if we have another half-life going on here, then we'll have one quarter of the material we started with and so on and so forth. One eighth, one sixteenth, and then one thirty second. So one thirty second ends up being, oh, what does that math work out to? So with one thirty second, you have about 3.13% of your sample left. So if you've got one more half-life, you have one sixty fourth. So that's gonna be around 1.5%. That means 98.5% of your original material is decayed away. So after about five half-lives, you know, basically just about all your material is gone. So for something with a really long half-life, this can take a while to really, you know, get the radiation down to a, a, a more palatable level. So anyway, half-life is a very, very well-known, very predictive value. It is pretty constant among... Uh, it is very constant given a, a radioactive material. It does not really change. Um, now this is not an intuitive notion that the that half-life is a constant thing. Uh, I say that because any single, you can look at an atom for as long as you want to um, and you're not guaranteed of a decay. Just a single atom here. You have you have no idea when a single atom will decay. It's it's random, basically. Um, so that so that does not tell you why half life is stable. But all of a sudden, you add a bunch of. I'm just going to start drawing atoms as dots. You add a bunch of other atoms around here, and all of a sudden, you can start averaging this out. Um, the way this works out is that since atoms are so small, you have so many of them that just by the sheer fact of how many you have, it just averages out. I'm just going to tell you how, how, how many atoms you do have in a sample. So I'm going to, for those of you who are chemistry inclined, this will, uh, this will be review, but for those who aren't, let's go into it. So in chemistry, a way to describe, um, a constant amount of atoms in a material is called the mole. So the mole is equal to the atomic weight of an atom of an element, what have you, an isotope in grams expressed in grams so in the last episode we discussed uranium 238 and the atomic weight of uranium 238 is you know it's like 238.05 or something but we'll just say 238 for now is close enough so convert this 238 to just put a grams in it and say we have 238 grams of uranium uh, that's one mole of uranium uh, bear with me here so let's go on to something like carbon 12 this is a very common this is what makes up the grand majority of carbon that you see on a day-to-day -day basis. So carbon 12, a mole of carbon 12 would be 12 grams. See how that works? So what this, so these two samples here both have the exact same number of atoms. That is what the concept of mole dictates. So how many atoms is that, do you ask? Well, that is known as Avogadro's number. You may have heard of that. Avogadro's number, sometimes expressed as Na. And this is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the 22nd. And that is basically 6 with 22 zeros afterwards. So a lot of zeros. That is a lot of atoms. So basically what this boils down to is just uh, statistics. So there's something called the law of big numbers. And what this basically says is as you get closer to infinity in terms of sampling something, uh, it all just averages out and you always get the same result. So... For example, say you have like a coin. That's my attempt at drawing the Lincoln Memorial on a penny. <laughs> uh, a fair coin has a 50-50 shot of being heads or tails. So uh, if you flip it 10 times, you'd expect five heads and five tails. But you might really get, you know, four heads and six tails. So, uh, you know, you just keep upping that. Say we do 100 samples, you might get 47 heads and 53 tails do a thousand samples you might get you know 503 heads 497 tails so just keep going this out to infinity 
or close to infinity and you'll basically you'll end up getting the same result every single time so that's the reason half-life is so predictable and why it's always so constant just because you have so many atoms just like an unquantifiable amount in terms of what humans can imagine just a insane amount of atoms here so i mentioned this earlier so if something has a very short half-life i'm just going to cover it again uh Half-life is inversely proportional to activity, so that means as activity goes up, half-life goes down. Uh, so the more, the higher the half-life, the shorter the half-life, the more activity you have in a sample, or the more radioactive a sample is. So basically, those radioactive materials that are considered most dangerous are those with the shortest half-lives, uh, because they, they get rid of all the radioactive material and decay the most rapidly. So, uh, yeah, let's go on to discuss uh, what happens when something decays. So just because a radioactive material decays away does not mean all that material is gone now. There's no more radiation. Uh, it can also decay into something that's still radioactive. So uh, what you can end up getting is just like a huge decay chain. Uh, I don't have, let me, here, let me bring one up. Sticking with our uranium-238 theme, I'm just going to go with this. So uranium-238 has a 100% chance of alpha decay, and we'll get into that in the next video, but this will basically just decay down to thorium-234, and uh, uranium has a half-life of uh, 4.47 times 10 to the nine years. Then it decays down to thorium-234, which then has a half-life of 24 days. 24 days. So it'll take a long time for this uranium to go away, but once it turns into thorium, the thorium will go away pretty quickly, relatively speaking. And then the thorium-234 will decay away into, uh, oh, what is that? Protactinium. Protactinium-234. And this is going to be, it looks like a beta decay. Yeah. Something like that, yeah, beta decay. We'll get into that in the next video. This has a T half-life, T1 half of 6.67 hours. This is just a coincidence that these half-lives happen to be getting shorter. They can be go, they can go from short to long. And then this will decay again into uranium-234. So as you can see, we're kind of dancing all around this stuff. We'll get more into how that works in the next video here. But my point here is I just wanted to point out that, you know, just because it decays away doesn't mean you're good. It's just gonna, it has the potential to go to another another radioactive material. And this will go, this will keep going on like probably 15 more times until you end up with uh, a lead 206. And lead happens to be at the end of a lot of decay chains. It's the most stable heavy, heavy atom. So lead happens to be at the end of a lot of decay chains. And I don't know why I'm bothered running the Half-Life, because it's stable. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think that about covers what I wanted to for this episode. Um, nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy, just some some terms we had to go over to make sense of some other stuff. But, uh, yeah, I hope that helped. I hope that was informative. I hope you enjoyed that. But uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. We will be discussing radioactive particles, actually, so alpha particles, beta particles, gamma particles, all the good stuff, neutrons, neutrinos. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. See you later.